Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 15.3 RC has been out for a couple of days. I've been using it primarily on my iPhone 13 Pro Max and I also have it on the other devices here, the iPhone 11 and iPad Pro and iPhone 10. So I wanted to share my experience and your experience based off the YouTube community poll like we do every week. At this time, there's over 12,000 votes and 174 comments. I've taken my experience along with every comment here, I've read every single one of them to determine what's going on with this update and whether or not it's ready and if you should install it. Now, the first thing is the features in iOS 15.3 are pretty slim, at least as far as we know so far. So unless Apple updates their notes when they release this version, we really don't know everything that's in it. And it could have Apple ID as there's code for that in it and other small changes with wording and setup and more. However, there's not any major changes in it like we see every time, whether that be new emojis, new app privacy reports, things like that. We're just not seeing it this time around. We do know that the security bug is fixed. I mentioned this, but the Safari security bug where there was a vulnerability that could sort of track everything you're doing, not only on iPhone, but Mac as well and iPad, that has been patched in 15.3. That's been confirmed. So we know that that's patched at this point. It also seems that bugs have been fixed for the music streaming bug, where it would sort of use the CPU more than you would expect and then in turn cause bad battery life. That seems to be resolved as they haven't mentioned it in their notes at all that it's still an issue. With the previous update 15.2 and 15.2.1, they actually mentioned that specifically. And now it's not mentioned, so we hope it's fixed. It seems to be fixed, but we won't know 100% until they tell us for sure. Also, that odd text issue when you're connecting AirPods is gone away as well. So maybe you have AirPods Pro, you open them up, give it just a moment, and apparently they're very low. They connected to my, my iPad first, and there we go. It took a while to connect to my iPhone for some reason, but the odd text that was underneath here has gone away. So that's been resolved. Now, as far as the other new thing, I wanted to share with you quickly on this device, the iPhone 10, that it actually shows the hello screen. So on some devices it's showing this, on others it's not. So I updated this today so I could share with you the benchmark scores, as I said in the of what's new video, and it's asking me for my passcode. So we'll go ahead and put that in, and it says software update complete, hit continue, give it just a moment, and we have to go through a few setup processes. So it wants to know if it can use Siri, and it's telling us how to use Siri, we can improve voice dictation if we want, and iPhone analytics, we can share that or not, and then we can go to the home screen. So for whatever reason, it wasn't showing like that on all devices, just this one and my iPad. I forgot to mention that in the what's new video. Now let me change the wallpaper so they match, and then we'll take a look at battery life. I've changed the wallpaper. Let's go ahead and run Geekbench so we can take a look at that a little bit later. And as far as battery life is concerned, battery life has been pretty good. In fact, in the YouTube community poll, I took all of the people that mentioned iOS 15.3 RC and how their battery life was and put that together so I could give you an accurate sort of look at what battery life is like, because my battery life is going to be different than many others. So let's first take a look at my battery life. We'll go to battery. My battery health is at 100%. And if we go back the last 10 days here, you'll see today was three hours and 19 minutes of screen on time, six hours and 32 minutes of screen off time, and I used about 50% of my battery. If we look at the day before here on Friday, three hours and 28 minutes, eight hours and 33 minutes of screen off time. So a lot of screen off time, you'll see I had some background activity for music, streaming, and things like that. So it's actually been pretty good. It's not amazing battery life compared to what others are getting, and my friend Abishek sent this in, he has an iPhone 11 that's two years old, and he's getting about five hours and 51 minutes of screen on time and six minutes of screen off time using about 60 to 70% of his battery. That's pretty good on that phone. Again, similar results today, five hours and 36 minutes of screen on time, three minutes of screen off time, and using 40% of his battery. So this is getting what you would expect for an iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now, according to you in the YouTube community poll, 21 of you said that it's good. So 21 of you out of 25 total said that it's good. Now, a lot of people mentioned battery out of the 170 comments, but for 15.3 specifically from that YouTube community poll, quite a few of you mentioned other versions. So as far as 15.3, when it comes to battery life, 84% of you are saying that it's good or better than iOS 15.2.1 or whatever earlier version you were on. 
15% or only four of you said that it wasn't good. So this really doesn't matter what device you're on. It can be an older device, a newer device, unless it's an older device with degraded battery health. It actually seems like it's a pretty stable update, including the iPad as well when it comes to battery. Many of you know that I've had poor battery life on my iPad. So let's take a look at that. We'll go to settings, go down to battery, wait for it to load here. And over the last 10 days, and I'll share my battery health using coconut battery here. So you can see on my iPad, but today I had two hours and 11 minutes of screen on time, six hours and 12 minutes of screen off time. I think the screen off time is the problem as I don't ever use this with the screen off. And I'm typically using this for things like YouTube and to respond to people on Twitter and messages and Safari. I have 85% of my battery life left and I charged to 100% at 327 PM where it was pretty low. So the previous days I'm getting about six hours of screen on time up to eight. So I think it's going to get better over the next couple of days. Sometimes that does take a little bit of time, but it's pretty good overall. Now, as far as overall stability, stability is quite good. In fact, most people don't have many bugs at all. I saw one person that said that they had it lock up or freeze. I saw that with beta two. I have not seen that at all with this particular update, the RC, which should be the final version. So it's very stable and it's also very smooth, especially if you have a ProMotion device, whether it's ProMotion or not, or an iPhone 11 or any of those devices, it seems very, very smooth just with regular use, opening apps, opening the cameras nice and fast. You saw there camera, it doesn't matter which device you're on nice and fast. Everything seems to respond like you would expect it to from an iOS update. As far as the storage bug, it's been resolved for me, but not for everyone. I've had quite a few people report that it doesn't show the correct storage in certain apps now. So most people say that it loads, it might take a little bit longer to load, but it will load. But sometimes the apps are giving incorrect data as far as that goes, but most of this is showing properly and it's loading system data as well. So it seems to be much better as far as that goes. I still think they need to fix a few little bugs, but it's not a functional bug. And it looks like the actual iPhone storage is correct now. And it's not giving the incorrect number as far as your overall data. Now, as far as green tint and red tint, I keep getting questions about that. If you have an iPhone 13 series device, people complain of red tint. If you have an iPhone 12 series device, people are complaining of green tint. At this point, if you have green tint on a 12 series device, I would say maybe bring it to Apple if it's within warranty or you have Apple care and have them diagnose it as I don't think they're going to fix it with a software update. However, if you have an iPhone 13, it will be within warranty. And if it still continues to bother you or give you that problem, then I would definitely have them take a look at it. I really haven't had any issues on this update with that, with red tint or green or anything showing up. So it seems to be better. Typically the only thing I run into is with brightness and this is an odd bug, not really a big deal, but when I turn off the display brightness, when I'm recording this video, so it doesn't auto adjust on its own, what I'll do is I'll change it so that it never locks. And then under accessibility, I'll change the actual brightness. So auto brightness is off. So you're not getting variable brightness when I'm recording this video. However, when I turn this back on, oftentimes this will drop all the way down and then I'll have to pull it back up. It's just an odd, small little bug. It's not a big deal as I know that it happens regularly, but it's something worth mentioning. Now, cellular connectivity seems to be really good for me. I did hear from one person that said that it's worse. However, for me with this update, whether that be on Wi-Fi or if I turn off Wi-Fi here and we switch over to 5G or 4G, it actually switches fine now. Before I would have to sort of go into airplane mode, reload everything, have it reconnect. Then I could start music if I maybe was driving in the car. Now it seems to be working properly as you would expect, although maybe a little slow when switching between 5G and 5G UC and then back to LTE and so on. Hopefully they'll fix that with future updates, but it's definitely better than it was with 15.2.1 or 15.3 early betas. Now, as far as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, no problems whatsoever for that with me. I showed you that we did have a little bit of slow connectivity here with the AirPods Pro, but that's typically because I have so many devices here that it gets confused and takes a moment to sort of connect. So really no issues with that. You'll see sometimes it takes a moment, plus it's low on batteries as well. I need to charge it, but typically Bluetooth and Wi-Fi seem to be pretty good. I haven't seen a lot of complaints and Wi-Fi. It can be specific to the router. There are a few remaining bugs though. And one that I see consistently is CarPlay. 
it really seems to be something that Apple has maybe changed something in the backend code where it makes it incompatible with specific cars. Now, the problem is, is with different car manufacturers, whether that be Honda, Toyota, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, they don't typically update their software often. So if Apple changes something and it changes compatibility, it's not easy to go update those cars. Some newer cars will update over the air more easily, but for some reason, something here keeps messing that up. Some people say it's fixed, but a lot of people keep having issues. Also, some are saying that their Safari extensions don't work properly anymore. So that and some shortcuts for focus modes and things aren't working like they used to. Now that can be fixed by resetting them back up. So there's something that broke there for some people, not everyone, but as far as the overall bugs in this, they seem to be really related to CarPlay, Safari extension, and some shortcuts. Really no major bugs and very, very stable for most people. RAM management is also good, so having apps loaded in the background, you'll see the entire time of this video, YouTube hasn't closed on me, so it's staying open, and that's true of many other apps. And also, performance is good. Like I said, it's super smooth. Performance on the iPhone 10 is good as well. And the iPhone 10, like I said, I would run the benchmarks for you. Here's the benchmarks, 900 for single core, 2,415 for multi-core. Now, the odd thing is I've run them on the other devices as well, just to sort of get an idea. And the odd thing is here, you'll see that the scores have changed a little bit based off of the previous scores that I had if you watch the What's New video. So a couple days ago, I ran the What's New, in the What's New video, I ran benchmarks and you'll see on the 20th. So I ran it twice today and we have varying results and the single core is about the same, multi-core has gone down a little bit. So it just varies depending on what you're doing. I typically expect that to go up, but 4,700 is about as good as you're going to get with this. So it hasn't really felt any different or given me any problems but it seems to be going down on all of these. I, saw, I found the same on these devices as well, which is actually backward or atypical for what you would expect with this. So in Geekbench, again, here's the scores. So you can see the scores are a little bit different on the iPad and iPhone 11. They're not bad, but they have changed slightly depending on single and multi-core. As far as when to expect them to release the update, well, I expect next week, probably by Tuesday, Last year, we had it released on the 26th, and they could release it on the same day, but last year they released it on a Tuesday, and I would expect maybe the 25th this year to release it on a Tuesday, but no later than Wednesday, typically, unless there's additional issues and they maybe have a different release candidate. But normally, as long as there's no issues, and this one does seem to be quite stable, I would expect it to be ready by Tuesday. But again, they could change that, but expect that along with watchOS 8.4 and all the other updates with macOS 12.2 and iPad, of course, and Apple TV and HomePod. So expect all of those updates then. And if you're wondering if you should install the update and is it ready? I would definitely say it's ready. To me, it's the most stable version we've seen of iOS 15. And that's a good thing. It's very stable, no real issues other than specific apps that probably need to be updated. Some of those have been updated. I mentioned that in the what's new video with the smart lock app from Google, they seem to be much better as far as that goes. And as far as if you should install this update, you definitely could try it out. As long as the release candidate doesn't have bugs, this will be the version released to the public, so you would just be able to get it early. So if you have your phone, you want to try it out, just make sure you have a backup just in case. But definitely, I would try it out as long as you have that backup and have a computer to roll back if you need to do that. Seems very stable to me, and it's definitely a great update. I'm glad to see they've got it much more stable, but there's not a lot of really features in it. So maybe they're holding back for iOS 16. It's really hard to say at this point. Now, as far as the YouTube community poll, like I said at the beginning of this video, there's over 12,000 votes and 180 comments at the time of this video. So we've gotten a few more comments since. 17% of you are on iOS 15.3 RC already. 70% of you, which makes sense, are on iOS 15.2.1. 3% of you are staying on iOS 14.8.1 or older. 2% of you are on 13.7 or older. And 9% of you are using Android. This seems to go back and forth between 7 and 9%. So thanks again to everyone that voted and commented to try and help us get the best overall understanding understanding of the update. Let's take a look at some of these comments. Now you can see someone said 15.3 RC decreased my battery health from 100% to 95% on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. It didn't decrease your battery health. It just checked the actual physical capability of the battery. It remeasures 
it and this can vary a little bit up and down, but it just remeasures it. It doesn't affect the battery health overall. Cheyenne Asaf said, don't you want to make a video about long-term review of the new MacBook Pros? I have made one on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, so be sure to check my channel feed. You should see that there. Riley Burrell vlog said, hi, I'm on iOS 15.3 RC and it's running great. No major battery issues and not a lot of bugs. I'm also using watchOS 8.4 RC on my Apple watch series five, and it's also running great. So the connectivity on both devices has been improved. Matt said 15.3 RC on 13 is great. All the bugs I had in beta one and beta two are gone. Graham Evans said iPhone 13 running great on the RC build, much better battery life, and the weird text when I connect my AirPods is finally sorted. Byron Johnson said I'm on iOS 15.3 RC, it's running great, no issues at all. Ethano said 15.3 RC on my iPod Touch is surprisingly smooth. Things open quickly, RAM management is okay, and the storage bug is gone. Obviously I'm not going for battery life because it's trash either way. Comparing the usability to my 10R, I'd say it's a little under that, but I could definitely get by. Cam Cameron said using iOS 15.3 RC on my 13 Pro Max, battery life is better than 15.2.1. It also feels smoother and performance is definitely better. Tyler Horvath says I'm on 15.3 RC on my 13 Pro Max. It's definitely the best battery life and performance I've seen so far with iOS 15. Paulo Ferreira said 15.3 RC has been working flawlessly. That problem I had with the storage seems to be gone. Had to hard reset my 13 Pro and everything seems to be working fine now. Great vids, dude. Thank you. Gabriel Moses Lee Production says, I'm on iOS 15.3 RC on my 13 Pro Max. 120 hertz feels great. Battery life has been great too. Love your videos. Thank you. Era of Aurora says, I've been using iOS 15.3 RC on my iPhone 8 Plus since it's released, and I think it's great. It fixed my weird issue, and performance and battery is better 100%. Angel Lopez said, for some reason, iOS 15.3 is running okay, but not perfect. I've been having a slower 5G data speeds. Also notice when it unlocks with face ID, the lock symbol will appear locked when the phone is already unlocked ready to swipe. It's weird. It's only happened to me once. Other than that, it's been pretty good. Battery life is great and scrolling is smooth as ever. Gertie Manier said 15.3 RC on iPhone 7. Okay. Battery life and performance is pretty good. Sometimes battery drain, stutter and lag, but less than on previous versions. Pretty happy with it. Mark Viato said iPhone 13 Pro, iOS 15.3 RC running like a champ. Still smooth. No issues. Battery has been holding up. No complaints as of yet. 15.3 on my 12 Pro Max is running sweet no issues or bugs, battery life is very good. For me, this beta has been better than 15.2 final release. And so that's everything with iOS 15.3 RC. I'm thinking this is probably going to be the final build as long as there's no additional issues that Apple finds somewhere along the way. If there is, I would expect maybe a release candidate too on Monday. If not, we should see the final release in the first three days of the week. And so it'll be out to everyone. And then we'll move on to iOS 15.4 with 15.4 beta one. Maybe they'll slow down a little bit if they're really not pushing out a lot of features. Maybe they have something big plan for iOS 16. Like I said, I really hope so with some redesigns and more, but again, we'll have to wait and see. But if you've found anything else in 15.3, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.